Although the law is changing on January 1st, that's not stopping people from taking their concealed carry permit classes. There's a lot happening here. I want to show you at home what's going on. Behind me, you see these power lines that are tilted. This was Lauren Posen has been tracking the story all day and is live in Brentwood for us tonight with a closer look at how things are going. Lauren? Well, Claire, we're inside the Brentwood City Hall. One thing this court is not is it's not a free pass. Those in it, they're held accountable and they have to get better. A former graduate of the court Sold, tells if no me. no one wins, that pot grows. Our Lauren Posen is in Nashville tonight as the pot and the excitement is growing. Uh, Steve, you have no idea. Just take a look at the tent. We're inside here. Check it out. Wall to wall people. Everywhere you look, there are people. This man here has bought some tickets. How many tickets did you buy? I bought 30 tickets. The main lot of Auto Plaza is right across the street. We're standing on the overflow lot, and this is where it all happened. All of it caught on camera. Take a look at entry level police officers, what they can expect to get paid here in O'Fallon. Now, before, well, Shafley is right across the street from where we are here on Bellevue. And on Bellevue, you can see right behind me, and I'll step aside so you can see even better. The street, well, it's closed off. So that's one issue this construction is causing. And that's where Lauren Posen is right now. Uh, Steve, that's right. There's a lot happening here. I want to show you at home what's going on. Behind me, you see these power lines that are tilted. We have crews working on those power lines. And just take a moment and look at that. That's how powerful this tornado was. But that's not the only spot the tornado hit. It also jumped across the street, and you can see that wreckage in the distance. Judy Lawrence says it's her faith that got her through the tense and scary moments as the tornado ripped through her home. It was the roaring train sound, and so I, I got in that corner of this house right there where that's left standing. I was downstairs in that corner, and all of a sudden I heard that train, and I heard ripping and tearing, and everything was going every, I knew my house was going. While much of her home is gone, she tells us her clothes and some of her belongings she was able to save. But to the left and the right of her, shells of her neighbors' homes. You can just really see right away just how powerful this tornado was. Now, this wasn't the only spot the tornado hit. And coming up at 5, I'm going to take you across the interstate. You're going to hear from a man who not only lost his house, but his business. What's keeping him so positive through this tragedy? That's ahead at 5. Live in Perryville, Lauren Posen, News 4. News 4's Lauren Posen was in the courtroom. She's live now with the Bomberito Street Fleet asking both families how they're holding up. It was a very emotional day in the courtroom. We heard from Chris Santa, his fiance Lisa Marie Simpson in Kilwa Jones also spoke, taking us back to that night of September 25th, 2015. I held it together till they talked about my mom and the same was for Kilwa. He held it together till they talked about his mom. So love her moms. Chris Anna says he is overwhelmed. In a federal courtroom Friday, he once again came face to face with the man who shot and paralyzed him. Kilwa Jones spoke to Santa and apologized to him and everyone else affected by his actions. It was hard because I thought it was sincere. It was hard. Santa's mother, Candace, echoed her son. I felt like it was very sincere. Um, I, you know, I think he is one of those poor young men that got off on the wrong path. From the Santa family to the Jones family, two families greatly affected. <laughs> That's just, you just can't even imagine that. He'll be 61 when he get out of jail. Jamila Allen says her brother was the glue that held their family together. She says he struggled with alcohol and abusing pills, but says he was a good man who made a very bad, life-changing decision. I love my brother, and that wasn't him, but he still did it. He recognized it wasn't right. Despite the actions of Jones, Santa says he is open to Jones writing to him from prison, but that's not all. He also says he would like to get in touch with Jones's son. Me and Lisa have thought maybe we could get a hold of Tierra and uh, at some point in the future maybe um, take the kids to the park or or go to their birthdays or something. In speaking with Santa's fiance Lisa Marie Simpson, she told me this has completely changed their lives and that this has become their new normal. Reporting live downtown, Lauren Posen, News 4. Tonight she's sharing her story only on News 4. Lauren Posen is live with the Bomberito Street Fleet downtown where this all started last night. 
Yeah, Steve, that's right. This is where that woman drove to for safety outside the Walgreens here on Lafayette. Now, the woman didn't want her identity shown, but she was willing to share her story with us so this doesn't happen to anyone else. It's just insane. I think if I wouldn't have ducked the way I did, maybe one would have hit me. Wednesday night, 630. She says she was downtown heading in the area of South 14th Street and LaSalle. Well, I get the green light and I'm going to go ahead and this guy who has a red light is going to turn or he did turn right in front of me and pretty close. I was pretty close to him, so that upset me, so I honked. That's when she says things escalated quickly. All of a sudden, I felt all this glass smash all over me. She says she slammed on her brakes. He put his car in reverse and went on the opposite side of the street, going in reverse, the wrong direction, and was shooting, I, I would say, at least seven to eight times at my car, and he had pretty good aim. Bullets went through her car door, one even hitting her headrest. And so I started bolting, you know, towards that Walgreens, thinking, well, I don't know if I should go try to go, you know, down 44. I don't know if I should try to go home. I had glass, like, in my eyes and in my mouth and on, all on the side of my face. She ended up at this Walgreens on Lafayette and called 911. Uh, there was a guardian angel of some kind that was watching over me. It's, it's almost eerie, you know. Now, one thing with this case, our witnesses, police are looking to speak to anyone who saw anything. So if you did, be sure to contact police. Reporting live in St. Louis, Lauren Posen, News 4. 13, 14, 15, 17 year olds. The argument is under state law, there is no provision that says that they cannot carry a firearm concealed. How did our lawmakers let this happen? But when you go in and you rewrite the law and you just put a one sentence line on there that says basically that you can concealed carry now and you don't go in and make a distinction for age groups, then it opens it up to kids. Again, this applies only to state law. With the law changing, attorney Matt Fry says it's still important to get a concealed carry license. He says it offers more protection. We found out many people are doing just that. Although the law is changing on January 1st, that's not stopping people from taking their concealed carry permit classes. At first, we saw a little dip in classes where classes, uh, we got like two or three seats open, no big deal. And then, you know, come November, December, dead enrollment was back up and we were full every weekend. And it was like, what's going on here? Gun shop owner Aaron Tarlow says to him, this means one thing. Okay, hey, it's legal to, to carry a gun, so maybe they're not going to go get the permit. They're not going to go get the physical card. But they're saying, hey, I need to know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. It's showing responsibility on their half. However, there's going to be a fraction of our society out there that says, I don't need to, I don't need to have any training. And that's a frightening prospect. This is News 4 at 10. Good evening, I'm Lauren Posen. Thank you so much for joining us for this late edition of News 4. Extreme cold has settled over the St. Louis area. Well, new tonight, a 93-year-old man is dead, killed in a house fire in St. Charles County. The home is on Emerald Place Drive. This is near Highway 94, just outside of Cottleville. News 4's Rob Sneed has the late report from that scene. Investigators say two people attempting to stay warm inside a vacant warehouse caused a massive four alarm fire. The single digit temperatures made fighting the fire extra difficult for first responders. News 4's Alexis Zotos is taking a look at what the city is doing to make sure everyone is safe as those temperatures continue to drop. Well, St. Louis County police are looking for a missing man from Jennings. Police say 59 year old Derek McGee suffers from dementia and Alzheimer's. He was last seen leaving a house in the 9400 block of Pattonwood in Jennings. Now that was around midnight last night. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to call St. Louis County Police. The Major Case Squad is asking for help tonight finding two men who may be connected to a murder in St. Louis County. Police are looking for a 20 year old Tradell Bunker and 18 year old Jamone Lewis. Investigators say they are persons of interest in a deadly shooting in Bell Fountain neighbors on Wednesday. Police say they should be considered armed and dangerous. The victim was found behind a home on Shepley Drive. Officers believe someone out there can help solve this case. A manhunt is underway in Little Rock, Arkansas, after a three-year-old boy was shot and killed during a road rage incident. Police say the child was on a shopping trip with his grandmother Saturday night. Investigators believe this shooter got upset because the grandmother 
was driving slowly. They say the man got out of his car and fired a shot, which hit the little boy. Members of the Electoral College will formally cast their votes tomorrow to elect Donald Trump as the next president of the United States. But some electors say they want some more information about the extent of Russia's interference in the presidential election. Well, if you'll be traveling over the holidays, you will not be alone. According to a AAA survey, nearly one third of Americans will be crowded in the nation's highways and airports between Christmas and New Year's. Chris Martinez has more on what to expect during your holiday travels.